Hello. Hello. Welcome to Band Therapy with Smidge and Kyle. What's happening? I'm Smidge. No, wait, I'm Kyle. She's Smidge. <laughs> I'm Smidge. This is Kyle. <laughs> So if you're just stumbling on us, uh, who are we, you ask? Yes, who are we? We are East um, of June. nine members of East of June. We have a we had a third member, Mr. Dirk Lance, who we recently parted ways with and out of the his departure and then obviously your medical issue that you're dealing with, we decided that we wanted to do a little We'll go into that. A little band therapy podcast. Video cast, whatever Video we're doing, blog cast, which we're hoping to do more of in the future. We're hopeful that this is the first of many episodes. We we had a conversation yesterday on the phone, and we were just kind of talking about ideas and something that came up with. You know, there's comes to like independent music and being an independent band. The only resources or sort of podcasts and things that are out there are very like tutorial, self help, mentorship, like here's how you do email marketing. Here's how you how many pieces of content you should do. Here's how you boost your but there's no one just like venting about so we want to talk about shit. the shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No one's just talking about like what it's actually like to be in a band and juggling all the bullshit and the day to day stuff and the fucking grind and the persistence and Yeah. You know, we're like this might be a good opportunity for us to do something a little bit different. Yeah, and uh, so we basically started as a band six years ago. We um, we met because I got a random email from this guy, and he was like, "Yo, what's up? I saw your music online." And <laughs> yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I said. And uh, you're cool. Do you want to collaborate? And I was like, interesting. I was just getting out of a terrible producer situation, so I was like, why not? How long ago did I reach out after you ended your situation with what's his fuck? Yeah, what's his fuck? Um, there's probably like within four to six months. Okay. I think I was in the mindset of just like, I'm going to be so open minded because I was working with a producer who was like very manipulative and like really wanted to control everything I was doing. So I was just listen like, you know parasite. what? Yeah, wasn't a parasite. Um, but I was just like, so like, I'm going to be so open minded to whatever comes my way. And he came my way. That sounded like it was going somewhere else. And uh, we talked on the phone the next day. And I was like, how did you find me out of the blue? And he's like, well, saw you on Bumble. <laughs> True story. Which, funny enough, uh, a couple of months earlier, I had, you know, because Dirk and I actually had been working with another female vocalist that we thought we were just going to write for and produce for. Mm -hmm. And it didn't work out. And I just kind of put it up on my vision board like fine female vocalist however that may appear in the universe i am open to that the universe happening. was like a bumble <laughs> <laughs> that's how it's gonna appear yeah yeah so and so then we started just like collaborating on some tunes and writing with dirk yep. um previously of Incubus. and uh and then we just kind of were like you know what we have a lot of music and we want to put it out so let's just be a band and that thus started East of June. And then COVID hit. Wah, wah. <laughs> and God damn it, we're still here. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we just, we put out a few songs right before COVID hit. And we're like, all right, let's get this party started. And then it was like, yeah. No. no. Um, but you know, as a band, we tried to stay like on top of shit because you just have to keep it freaking flowing no matter what comes into your life. Um, and... You know, we we started uh, once things were like getting back to it. We we started putting out some more videos, and we had a few that went viral, and including the Michael McDonald video, which a video that just will not die, will not die, and um, <laughs> it's just a cover, and it was a joke that we did in a ten minutes of rehearsal moment. Yeah, this is a venting moment, like venting moment. The amount of comments and just dude, I had a a minute there where after that video came out, it went. Like, I've never seen a viral video happen, like, to oneself. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just like, you look at it, and within a second, there's, like, a thousand more views, and then 2,000, and you're like, what? what? Like, of all things to happen to this video. I mean, you would open TikTok and just hit refresh, and there's suddenly, like, a thousand new followers. And, and it was, like, crazy. it was awesome. It was crazy, but, like, the amount of, like, hate on that video and the comments of me and Lily, who were singing the beginning part, it was... We were harmonizing a rap song. We understand it wasn't very cool, but it was a fucking it was a joke. joke. Like we know it was dumb, and then like panned over to Jake, our drummer, who was like, 
he already was doing this cool like Michael McDonald impression. We're like, let's just put it in a video. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like people thought we were like serious. Like there was so many comments of people like not understanding. Yeah. And it was literally Girl, like fuck. it was like fucking coffee break for 10 minutes within a four hour rehearsal. We're like, cook quick. We'll just like get this real yeah. fast. And people like didn't even realize that it was a joke. They thought we were serious. And I mean, I think a lot of people did realize. Thank you for realizing. Um, But <laughs> many yeah. people were like. Yo, this is so like let the drummer sing. Like, yeah, I know. Yeah, Where's the like, full version? You're like he's yeah. not a singer. He just like <laughs> does this cool. Anyway, anyway, that was one venting moment. Um, but we did that, and then Virgin Voyages called us and was like, "Hey, do you guys want to do a two week stint playing shows in the Caribbean?" And we were like, "Sure, Charles. Gee, let me think. Yeah, I'm um, yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> so that was awesome. We got to do like." Nine or ten shows, and yeah, in two weeks. Basically. But it was sort of like post. It was like a middle of COVID, and there was like yeah, we were like not that yeah, many people. Yeah, like we were coming out of COVID. Actually, it was like when they first were getting the cruises back up and running, and yeah. so it wasn't like packed, which sucked. But it was also cool that it wasn't packed for the parts of it where we were hanging out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I felt like I mean we were still such a young band because when COVID hit, we weren't able to even attempt to play shows. The first time we actually, I think, even played live was when we went into East West Studios. Yeah, with Estrin and the Regiment Horn guys. Dan and Estrin from Hibbstank. Hibbstank. <laughs> Jesus Hibbstank yeah. Christ. That's where that came from. And um, you know, so we. It was a it was a great like opportunity for us to sort of gel as a band. And I do remember by the time we played the last show, I was like, "We are a much better band." I'm excited to start working on some some new material. But anyways, long story short, um, then after that, then- yeah, and then so we'll get into all that stuff. I think we, I want to get into some new stuff though. But well, you want okay. to tell the rest of the story? Well, we might as well. We're on, we're in the story. All right, all right, just quick, quick, quick. So we finished the cruise. <laughs> And as soon as we get back home, Dirk had to go fly back to the Midwest to handle some family business for like three and a half, four months. And Smidge and I held down fort and we got into our rehearsal space with her cousin Matanda. And we started to, we decided the, the initial idea was to get Matanda up to speed to be our new drummer because Jake is a hired gun, the guy that does the Michael McDonald impression. He plays with like Dorothy and yeah. he's been playing with Nick, awesome. Nick Carter and a bunch of other players. He's, he's dope. So, Jake was going away. Matanda came in, and at first we started getting him up, up to speed. And then it was like, I got, you new music? "I got some ideas. You got some ideas, yeah." So we started coming up with like we had "Kiss Me Like a Movie Ending." We had Return which of, is not out yet. Not out yet. Coming out. Return of the Water. We had worked up um, Parasite, which started from an idea called Criminal that you had at least yeah. in the first version of it. Um, you guys can check those out if you want. There was some other, there was one or two other ideas in there. There was like Trip and Color, which we never. Hunter, we started uh, doing Hunter. We had the chorus for Hunter, but we didn't have like the verse stuff. We had like, there was bits and pieces of stuff. We had a whole song Trip and yeah. Color that we never did anything with. But mm-hmm. anyway, and then Dirk came back and he heard, and then he had some ideas. And long story short, we spent, you know, pretty right. much 2022 just writing and, re- and rehearsing for a year. And then we went into East West and started cutting some drums. And then the new year came around and we started actually like finishing songs. We put out Hunter, we put out Return to the Water. um, And then we kind of went back and redid some stuff on, we had to go redo some drums with Donald Barrett, who plays with um, Lady Gaga. He's insane. We went back to East West and redid some stuff. And then we put out Texas Girl and Parasite with Sean played drums on it. Yep. Sean is our uh, current new awesome drummer, Sean Winchester. And, uh, I think every time we say a name, we got to just say it again in a weird way. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, he's played with like Smash Mouth and Everclear and he's, you know, fucking awesome. So we're really excited that he is our drummer. So. This is for the new people. Yeah. This is just a recap of our last six years. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, we, we put out a few songs in 2023 and then um, we actually hadn't played a show in a year and a half since the... Oh, we did the George Benson. Caribbean gig, yeah. So yeah. George Benson's manager, Stephanie, reached out, sent me a random text. I was out having a beer with my girl and was like, hey, you want to open for George Benson in a private gig for 5,000 people? We're like, <laughs> give me a second. Shit. Hold my beer. Yeah. You know, I'm texting everyone. You guys want to do this? And it, it worked out. And that kind of lit a fire under our ass to be like, oh, you know what? We are, we're actually a band. We need to get out of the studio and start playing. And 
that was when we got introduced to Sean and we started working on new material or more material and getting the the new songs actually worked up live and we spent the you know the second half of the year um playing playing shows and you know doing the things that bands do but um it, which leads us to our update yeah which you know so for you know a couple of years just Dirk has some family commitments and God damn it, we fucking tried. We we tried to uh, persevere and just make things happen. And it just, as time went on, it just became apparent that, um, you know, my man was getting, our man was getting pulled in, in too many directions. And for us, it's like, you know, we don't have some other obligations and band is like number one. Yeah. You know, we, we work to, we work to do the band. <laughs> and he's done the whole thing. Like he yep. knows what it's like. So it's. He's done. The, he's done the grind. He's he's been there and and done that in a lot of ways. And you know, we I think we all wish that you know we could have caught a break where it would have made sense for um you know him to be able to like go on tour or do whatever because we had an opportunity to do that. But it became more and more apparent that we were going to have to just like take the last minute show on a Thursday playing for ten people just to get in good <laughs> graces with the right promoter that's and what freaking you have to do. Yeah. We kinda of just have to slog it out and it was gonna be a, a grind and it just became apparent that, you know, our schedules and things were just not gonna work out. So we had to just have a honest heart to heart discussion about the best thing for, you know, East of June to continue forward and we're all good and you know, we but wish so Go ahead. We say, so, you know, we, we we wish our man all the best. We actually still have some songs that we need, that we've committed to finishing. Um, we're gonna, you know, we're not gonna like force anything. We're gonna get them done the right way and make sure that they all sound right and feel good. We're not just gonna go, okay, we can get these songs done in two weeks so we can move on. Like we're gonna we're gonna do it the right way. But um, you know, so he's still around, and that's sort of like path one. And then parallel path two is we are moving forward with our drummer, Sean Winchester. In the meantime, though, we did announce this on our, all our socials. Um, and I... Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've been uh, dealing with some vocal issues. Throat herpes. Yeah. It's not throat herpes. Um, throat I'm, syphilis? Throat... Throat syphilis? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's not. Um, so I started feeling like a couple months ago after all doing all these shows and like singing loud and a lot... Something was like off with my my vo- voice, and um, it just like felt like gravelly. There was something there. I'm not in control like I usually am, and I got it looked at, and there is a cyst on one of the sides of my vocal cords. Um, so I'm getting it removed, which means I will be on vocal rest for a little bit. Um, was it like four to six weeks, maybe, until I'm fully back? But and then you got to sort of like start testing the waters with how much you can push and yeah for sure this is definitely like one of those things where it's like you've taken for granted your thing that you do all the time and singing i've just always been singing and just to have to like be forced to stop um is just i mean it sucks i'm definitely dealing with like having to like halt where i want to be going especially in this new chapter that we're moving forward in so you know just one of those like mercury and gatorade (laughs) but of the voice (laughs) yeah yeah it's 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 definitely been the universe's way of telling us to take a pause regroup get your house in order um i think just you know all of the things that have sort of just all the stuff we've had to try and persevere through over the last couple of years. I think we were both a little burnt out by the time. Yeah, that's the other thing. Like, venting number two is, like, you don't realize, like, you're like, oh, I'm doing this thing that I love. Like, I should just be, like, freaking happy and joyful all the time. And you're like, wait, I am so burnt. Dude, I have a mullet now. That's just, this is just, like, a sign of depression. <laughs> you, you need to know. <laughs> I got to the point where I needed to just grow a fucking mullet. Yeah, man, like, we we were, like, just burning the candle at both ends and trying to make it work with Dirk's schedule and all these things happening and it was just like all right we need to like regroup because like you know you can only go so far um especially with like trying to get together and and this is the third gripe is like the social media game is just like the constant need to be constant is like yeah. it's, it's like impossible if you are well, living your life and also trying to make money and like do shit. And like, yeah, the reality was that there's just there's so much that needs to be done, and we were 
sort of as an indie ha- band. Yeah, we were hamstrung trying to do so much stuff in like a very small window, and it's just like you can't. It just wasn't sustainable. Right. Couldn't do it between shooting content, writing new songs, finishing old songs. Uh, you know, all just the day to day business stuff of like you know coding QuickBooks and making sure like our accountant is taking care of our stuff and people are getting paid on time and tax returns are getting done and just, you know, all the, you know, the website's getting up. Adulting. Every, every time we put out a song, it's like, we've got to like register it. And then we, you know, like all the metadata, you got to assign the ISRC codes. I got to upload it into the system. I got to copy and paste all the lyrics. I got to sign everybody. Like all that shit There's, just takes time. Yeah. It's such a grind. And it's like, there's like a meme where it's like a two circle <laughs> and one is like when you like think about being a musician, you think like, you know, it's this much like, you know, writing songs and playing and like this much of like metadata and other things. And really it's this much playing. <laughs> it's all the other, other shit, shit around it. Yeah. Yeah. So. But you still do it because we've. we've yeah. I'm, I'm honestly more excited than. I have, I'm more excited and energized now than I think I've been in a long time. So yeah. I feel like there's just a, a clear path ahead for us to be able to, you know, you know, we want to call it seven days a week, like be doing stuff to some degree, even if it's like an hour a day, you know, whether it's just yeah. little conversations that spark ideas like band therapy podcast or, um, you know, Vlogcast. taking taking 10 minutes like we just did to w- try and work through a, a chorus progression before we hit roll on a new song idea um yeah i mean we just wanted to like make this little thing to kind of like you know peel back the curtain a little bit what's actually happened with us i think be a i think be a sort of a a voice for bands like us that are independent that are like just struggling through the grind because like i said like it just feels like so much of the resources that are out there right now are like I'm the smartest person when it comes to marketing and breaking bands here's all the steps you can follow sign sign up below (laughs) you know and it's like yeah. We just want to hear from more bands that are like us that are just on the grind doing the yeah. shit and, you know, not and not even about like self-help or like we have all the answers. We're certainly going to share with you success stories we've had, failures we've had, talk about, you know, things maybe we, we would have done differently or we're going to do different going forward. Maybe get some some other musicians on the vlog cast, whatever this yeah, is. Yeah, that would be super cool to like build this thing out and like bring in other people and just kind of talk about life, like just trying to be a band just trying to find some success so we can quit the day job and, yeah. you know, just do this all all day. So basically, if you could go ahead and Venmo us. Uh, <laughs> One million dollars. One million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. So, yeah. So real quick. So recap, we are the band East of June. We make music. Smidge is having her tonsils removed. <laughs> I actually already had my tonsils. Uh, we're looking for a new bass player. Oh, yeah. We love our boy. And um, we are we are moving forward, and we are very excited. We are looking slowly for a new bass player. Yes, we are looking for somebody. So if you know of anybody, by all means, who doesn't, you can leave their name in the comments. <laughs> yeah. Requirements can't suck. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, they are feeling that they are filling the shoes of Dirk Lance, which is no pressure. <laughs> uh, yeah, no pressure yeah. at all. Um, but you listen, you know. We're so there, room for good ideas. Just like Dirk has a vibe, like we're working, we're looking for someone that has their own vibe, like someone that's going to bring something to the mix that's going to help take us to, you know, sort of the next, the next space for us to, yeah, reside. Res- yeah. Uh, what else is going on? Oh, we're mixing a song. Oh yeah, we're excited. Um, it's called Stars. It's we're both pretty excited about this um a little more than other songs (laughs) (laughs) well it's just like it's a unique song and it's like it goes in a direction like the end of the song you're like how did i get here from when we started over here (laughs) yeah so it's like it's like this it's it's almost like the rom-com that ends up like a horror film or something yeah (laughs) in like some odd way if you've heard our previous music you'd be like yeah that that That, checks that that tracks yeah (laughs) Yeah, for sure (laughs) Yeah, I think for me, like the the beauty of stars is once kind of got through it, I felt like as a producer and songwriter, obviously, that we just sort of found our sweet spot with it. And it sort of represents a pivot of like, okay, this this direction holistically, I think, makes sense for a band like us. It it still has a little bit of everything. It's still got some heavy, it's got some lead stuff, it's got some great vocals, it's got some really buttery keys, some tasty like it's just got all the it's got all the ingredients, got but it's tasty taste. But it's done it it's 
it's like the opposite of parasite like it it like it's it's still got the same parallels of like you know different sort of ideas and directions in a single song but it just takes a different path would you say it's got some seasoning <laughs> a bit of seasoning a little seasoning um yeah it's so, gonna be cool it's being mixed now and probably is gonna be our next single yeah so that one stay tuned. i think that one's gonna turn some heads i for me like i can't wait till i hear it all cleaned up and mixed and dialed in and, and balanced and because there's just a lot of there's a lot of cool stuff going on and um, in parallel we've actually been working on a cover song that we will we're not going to announce what it is just yet. I'm pumped about it. Yeah, it's dope. We've been talking about it for a while and then so crazy story. We're a little witchy in this band. Yeah, I, I was going through an old notebook from like 2020. Was it? Oh yeah, but don't say the name. I'm not gonna say the name, but. <laughs> I was randomly thumbing through this thing to just look back on some old notes. I was just kind of reminiscing, like, where was I kind of at at that time? And for whatever reason, I had this exact song title Crazy. written down like four years ago in and, my and book. And didn't ever think about it. We've never talked about doing it. And then all of a sudden, like... Hey, we should do that song. End of last year, we're like, you know what would be a cool cover to do? This one. That one. So... And we've been working on it. You know, we... we uh and I demoed something up in like two or three days pretty quickly. Yeah. Came together really, really fast. I just had a vision and an idea. And then, um, you know, because she's been dealing with her vocal stuff, she hasn't really been able to sing it at um, rehearsal or anything, but she did a, a quick scratch vocal so I could kind of get a an idea of the ballpark that, um, or the, I, should, I should say. Literal this, scratch. This sandbox. Scratchy ass playing. vocal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sandbox is more appropriate. Um, but it, it it sounds great. Like I can't wait. Like it's gonna be dope. Yeah, so we gotta, we're gonna put it out too. Yeah, I think that one's gonna that one's gonna leapfrog and 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 get up. We're, we want to get that one out as soon as we can. I think it pairs well with nicely with stars for sure. Yeah, the way sonically it just kind of sits. But um, yeah, totally. We we're gonna be working on that. I'm gonna be working on that with Sean, um, in while basically you're resting and recovering, so that by the time she's feeling well. We're gonna be able to just get her vocal on that one and and try and get that thing mixed and and out as soon as possible because it's it's gonna be we're gonna be playing it live like the next show we're alpha. playing it yeah it's gonna be great but yeah so we've just been kind of figuring out you know how to best move forward and tuning guitars down so it's less of a strain on on your voice and yeah um trying to you know find our inner children that aren't burnt out. <laughs> I found my inner child. And yeah. He's got a sixth grade mullet, and I'm. <laughs> and I'm <laughs> yeah, he's back, baby. Yeah, <laughs> my inner child's dealing with some shit currently, but we'll be back. Soon. Did, I, did I show you that um, that little screenshot that a friend had sent me, um, where it was like my I think it was like my fifth grade. It wasn't a yearbook because it was fifth grade, but it was sort of like had all of our class mm-hmm. photos, and it has like what do you want to be when you want to grow up? And it was like me with a mullet. And I said I want to be a guitarist in a hard rock band. <laughs> You made it. <laughs> I mean, uh, we're not hard rock, but we're like rock. We have some hard rock, but harder, harder, harder. Dare I say? Shred the gnar. Shred it, baby. Um. Anyway. Anyway, he's living his dream. I'm living it's my dream. Okay. Yeah. And this is it. This is like this is. It's about being comfortable in the uncomfortable. And just like, yeah, exactly. Like just knowing that, like. Life throws you a bunch of shit, and we're just trying to... We're flinging it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And like I said, or like we were saying earlier today, you know, being a musician is about not giving a fuck what people think while we're asking you, hey, what do you think? <laughs> yeah. What do you think about that? Let us know in the comments below. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so, you know, we are... We're just going to be grinding away behind the scenes. We're going to be figuring out, like, content-wise, what we can just post... Well, she's sort of like not even allowed to speak. In fact, we should do a whole reel where you just like write shit and just hold up the notepad. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> hey, can you give me some water? <laughs> FML. <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, for the next, you know, four to eight weeks, Smidge is going to be uh, resting and recovering. Sean and I are going to be continuing to work up uh, the cover tune and recording those drums. And we've actually got a new tune already that we're working on called yeah. The Wind in the Shadows, I oh. think is sort I think of- called that. If sure. that's called that. Yeah. It's cool. I mean, it sounds yeah. cool to me. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, we're 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 working on all this stuff, but we also want to just like, you know, give you more of a real peek into like this type of stuff and like what we're griping about, what we're excited about, like, you know, anything that you guys want to know about. Um, 
let us know. So yeah, is there anything in particular you want to vent about other than just like just the constant need to like shit out videos and photos and shit that has nothing to do with music whatsoever? I mean, yeah, that's kind of the uh lately I'm venting about my voice, but um yeah. I'm also venting about all the references I don't understand that you constantly are saying um because you're so much older. I mean, like if I just <laughs> like if I just talk about like I watched this great concert of Christian Death and he's like and she's like I Who's that? Yeah. <laughs> So I'll send you I'll send you a record when we when we wrap this up. Great, <laughs> Christian Death. Yeah, I'm good. Um. <laughs> Come on now. All right, I'll expand my hair. Shout out to Misery Signals on their farewell tour that's going to be going around. Cannot wait. Exactly. See, yeah. she has no idea. <laughs> this is what happens at rehearsals pretty much the whole time. But that's so. what makes us us. Like I, you know, I bring some shit. I'm like, oh, I heard this great lick here's an idea i kind of came up with and uh, and i'm like i hate it <laughs> just kidding <laughs> it sucks <laughs> but uh yeah is that it i think so i don't know I feel, yeah so <laughs> funny story of band therapy we actually did an entire episode before this one and then we noticed that like it stopped recording at like the 22 minute mark yet the audio went to like the 36 minute mark we're like sick now right. I have to do this again. Right. now we gotta do this again so actually, what I think we may end up doing is editing back and forth between the two. Yeah, we'll see. That sounds a little crazy. Yeah. But there were some good moments in that one. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> all right. Um, thanks for watching, guys. If you want to follow us and listen to our music, East of June, we're I everywhere. Think, I think we're going to do this again. I think third time is going to be the charm. I don't know. I'm kind of okay with this one. Yeah. Anyways. We'll take a pause. See you later. <laughs>